Hello everyone and welcome back to episode 3 of Kerbal Space Program. Last episode we ended on finally landing Corny Kerman safely back on Kerbin. Yes, it was such an achievement after watching Valentina, Jebediah, Theogas, and some other guy that we don't remember anymore crash into the surface of the planet and basically splat all over the ground. Now yes, I said that we were going into orbit and that is what we're going to do, but we decided to take a little bit of a sidetrack and, uh, and test out some new rockets. Now, as you see me uh, going on right here, I'm having a little bit of an issue trying to figure out how to actually complete this test mission, because basically what it says to do is to be on the launch pad and then to activate the engine. Originally, I, uh, I did an error by not activating it through the staging sequence and accidentally activating it through the right-click menu, which I thought would you know yield the same results, but it didn't. And then I had a bunch of subsequent failures basically saying, uh, not basically saying, but basically explaining that I'm really bad at timing parachute openings. Yes, I thought the parachute would be okay, but, you know, it still kind of killed everyone, so it wasn't much of improvement. Now, finally, I actually just decide, you know, we're not going to try to save money on fuel. We're not going to try to save money on anything. Let's just do the complete contract. Let's actually look like a halfway competent space industry. Because we need uh, investors to look at us and go, hey, they didn't just kill four people. They're an actually great space agency. And that's what we need to become. We need to plan missions to Duna. We need to plan missions to the moon. Minmus. Uh, other places that we don't know of right now because we're a really bad space agency. And so, yes, that basically is what comes next. Uh, we have to design an orbiter, and I, I believe that this uh, orbiter process is very intense. First of all, we're going to do it with our fancy, fancy, schmancy new parts that we've got. Uh, we don't need to uh, the SR1. Let's actually get the, uh, the new one. Uh, let's call her uh, the Long Haul because she's going for a long haul. Um... You know, she's going across. I don't think I'm spelling haul right. I still don't think I'm spelling it right. Ah, I don't know how you spell long haul anymore. All right, but yes, I think we are going to be building something that is going to spin around for quite a while, bring our kerbals back, and uh, do what we need it to do. All right, so let's put some uh, some fuel tanks on her because, you know, we really need uh, to be able to control where our rocket is going. I don't exactly know how much fuel we're going to need. Let's just hope that this is enough. Uh, let's see which one has a better uh, ISP, 320 in a vacuum, this one is 300. So we're going to have to use the swivel, even though it has, uh, I believe, less thrust. Actually, no. Well, yeah, it does. That's okay, though. We don't need to thrust in the late stage. We need it in the early stage. Okay, so let's stick on a uh, stacked decoupler. I'm hoping that we won't exceed the part count. We're at uh, 5 of 30 right now. Uh, then let's put on our uh, thumper solid rocket booster. Wow, that thing is humongous. All right, this is going to add six parts to it. Uh, I was hoping I could get it off the launch pad on some uh, smaller solid rocket boosters before we get to the big boy. Um, hmm. Then we can put on some fins. Maybe I don't need the fins on the solid rocket boosters. I can just add one here. Uh, yeah, we're exceeding some weight limits here. Um, hmm. Hmm. All right, is this a weight limit thing? Uh, issue with the uh, vehicle assembly building is a weight limit with the launch pad. I think it's with the launch pad, but I, I don't know. Uh, that's just the max uh, parts uh, supported. All right, and this has to do with weight. All right, so 75,000 uh, Kerbal bucks to upgrade. I think we'll do that. Uh, we'll take that offer. So we have an upgraded launch pad now. Um, so I think the vehicle assembly building is going to be the next big thing we have to upgrade. All right, so we're 15 to 30 parts right now. Um... Let's see if we can put some nose cones on these so they don't uh, fantastically blow away in the wind. I'm hoping this is going to be enough to stabilize us to where we need to go. Albeit, you know, you can never really be totally sure about these things. Put a parachute on the top. Uh, let's see if we can get that uh, science module as well. Alright, science module. Science junior. Alright, we're going to need some decouplers somewhere. Alright, so let's have heat shield and a coupler here. Come on, don't exceed the part limit. All right. 22 out of 30. This isn't bad. Okay, so we get decouple from here. We got decouplers there. Now we can decouple from up here. We got parachute. Let's add some more parachutes uh, since we have the space. All right. Okay, parachutes. A pair of chutes. Okay. 
And, okay, we have six, uh, room for six more parts. Um, what do we want to do with those six parts? I have no idea, but it's probably worth taking them up there with us. Uh, why don't we add, we could add a, a small module base. We could add, like, a, a mystery goo containment thing inside of it. Nah, I don't think it's worth it. I think we'll have to do that later. Uh, we just need to see if this works for now so we don't blow all of our money on it. Because this does cost $11,000 to take off. Uh, plus everything that we are going to have to pay for, uh, you know, if they die or not. So, Corny, you're up. Uh, I'll save the long haul. Oof. Let's hope it doesn't explode on the launch pad, actually. That would probably be more embarrassing than anything. Okay. Let's save this, and let's launch her and see what happens. As Corny Kerman, the best Kerbal pilot ever to exist on this great planet, steps into his rocket, he begins to realize that it resembles a wet, floppy noodle. Perhaps this is just some sort of manufacturing bug with the, uh, with the vehicle assembly, and they forgot to set some stuff right, but this could be quite an interesting launch. Here we go. I'm scared, I don't know about you. I am very scared that this is going to end ridiculously bad. All right, let's stage these together so uh, things work well. Okay, okay, we're going up. We're going up with considerable speed. Okay, we're starting to uh, get past Mach here. Oh God, we're getting pretty fast. Have we broken the uh, sound barrier? All right, there we go. That staging didn't work very well. Uh, things exploded. Okay, okay, we're starting to get a little bit of a polar turn on us. We don't want that. Okay, so we just need to make it out of the severe upper atmosphere, and I think we should be okay. Or in the lower atmosphere, and I think we should be okay to turn, because we can't turn this low or we break up in the uh, jet stream. Alright. Let's see if we can start pulling her over to the side a little bit. She's getting, hopefully, a little bit more loose on us. Come on. Come on. Angle right. Angle right. You can do it. Come on. Come on. Come on. You can do it for us. You can do it. All right, and then we have our final stage. All right. Uh, yes, we do have quite a bit of uh, vertical velocity on us. All right, let's see what we can uh, do. Okay, so we've got a bit of fuel on us, more than we normally would. I don't want to spend more than a half a tank down here in the atmosphere. All right. Okay. Okay, this is looking well. It's looking well. Okay. Um, okay, so we spent about an entire tank. All right, so we have a pretty good uh, thing going on here. We can't actually calculate anything out yet. We haven't upgraded our uh, space viewing thing to uh, angle like that yet. <laughs> Lovely. Well, even if we don't get scientific data up here, we can still get it back down in the up upper atmosphere, uh, which would work for us. I don't know what we exactly just achieved. Oh, we set a distance record, that's right, because we are traveling now horizontally. Yay. Okay. Um, orbit Kerbin. Fly a vessel up and accelerate parallel to the surface until you're in stable orbit to achieve this goal. Okay. We're approaching very quickly to Apoapse. Hopefully we can do this. Come on. Come on, we can do this. Okay, we are at Apoapse. Let's fire the engines back up, prograde. Here we are. Now it's just a matter of getting her uh, fast enough horizontal. I don't think we're gonna get it. I don't think it's gonna happen. I, it, it didn't happen. <sighs> Darn. Okay, it didn't happen, but it almost happened. So that is quite something. We've traveled quite a distance. Good lord, we're like super far away by now. Um. Okay, so this brings up a bunch of new issues. Uh, basically, the fact that we're going to have to try and really slow her down. Um, hmm. I guess we're really going to come at her at the side uh, as much as we can for uh, horizontal velocity and try to bleed all of that off until it almost gets a little bit too much for us to bear. We'll drop that. Uh, we'll fa uh, angle our uh, heat shield back against the atmosphere. Okay. Let's hope we can uh, we can do that. Alright, okay, so, you know, we're not getting too much velocity because we're angled sideways. Alright, we're starting to get a little bit of pull now. Um, okay, yep, let's separate. We gotta separate or we're gonna burn out. Um, okay. Okay. 
Everything is going well. Uh, we haven't lost anything significantly. We're not slowing down that much, but that's because we're still pretty high up in the atmosphere. Uh, we're really causing some fireworks show. Our uh, fuel tank is just it's just going, man. It's its really speeding up. Um, oof. That thing is off and away. Look at her go. Um, whoa! Holy crap, that was loud. Oh my god. Oh no, oh no, we're turning out of the jet stream. We're turning out of the stream. Oh no. Stay in, stay in, stay in, stay in, stay in. Okay, yep, yeah, RSAS is fighting it. Whoop, okay, oh, whoop, whoop, whoop. Okay, we fought it. We fought it when our parachutes op uh, ready to open. And the parachutes, after quite a considerable amount of time, eventually become safe to open and activate with graceful ease. Yes, the initial uh, large drone chute, at least that's what I'll call it, activates on the top, slowing the craft down considerably so that we can much more safely open our two smaller radial chutes, which work very well. Corny Kerman looks down upon Kerman again and knows that he is the sole survivor of a suborbital flight. No other Kerbal, Kerbal has been able to successfully survive such a story. Yes, he has a true legacy. But however, he was so excited to be the first Kerbal in orbit that he forgot to take this atmospheric data calculations that he had originally meant to take on the space program. However, his reputation is still increased, and he is definitely going to be right up for the next few missions. We end up recovering the vessel and getting a little bit of science for performing the suborbital uh, for the suborbital flight, and getting a little bit more for some readings, and it will definitely allow for some great new stuff. So thank you guys for watching. If you enjoyed this episode of Kerbal Space Program, a little bit less dark than the last one, do not forget to rate, comment, and subscribe. Otherwise, I will see you guys next time.